Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the York series. Sitting within North Yorkshire, York is a very historic place with 31 civil parishes within its city boundaries. Here's one of them for your enjoyment. Welcome back to York everybody and welcome to a linear village which is out to the city's east. It's the last of the linear villages in York as well. Everything else after this will be a nice circular route. Good thing, good thing. The hat's still on, the glasses are still on, it's still very much sunny and we're off to find Stockton Hall in the parish of Stockton on the forest. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Six to go in York and today we come to one I've been avoiding for a while simply because of its linear nature. I ended up loving this one, so that's a slap on the wrist for me. Welcome to Stockton on the Forest, and yes, you may have guessed it already, the main village here is called Stockton. As for the forest, well, the parish lies to the east of the ancient forest of Galtres, in which it was once included, hence the extended name. Stockton on the Forest is located to the east of the A64 between York and Scarborough, close to where it meets the A1036 at a roundabout. To the east are the villages of Upper Helmsley and Sand Hutton, and to the south the villages of Warthill, Holtby and Merton. As well as the main Stockton village, the parish also includes part of the hamlet of Hopgrove, which is split between it and neighbouring Huntington, the dividing line being Old Foss Beck. The part that lies within Stockton comprises around 100 households. Stockton was first mentioned in the Doomsday Book as Stotcherton, but much of the current village is based on the properties built on plots of land which historically were laid out in accordance with the Enclosures Act in the year 1800. Lined with some historic farmhouses and gorgeous old buildings, Stockton's standout feature is the early 17th century Stockton Hall. That alone is worth coming to visit this one for, but I can do better than just that. Boots on, let's go! Beginning at Blacksmith's Garage on Sandy Lane, Stockton on the Forest is a good example of a linear village. It follows only one main road for about one and a half miles, making it second only in length within York to Ruffeth. Many of the houses along the main road have names which make references to agriculture, local features or mysticism. One of the standout properties is painted bright yellow. This is Stockton House. It was built in around 1800, around the same time as Stockton Hall. It's unique because a blue plaque on its wall tells us that the village's first Methodist chapel and schoolroom was incorporated into this building. Directly outside this we find a bus stop. Stockton is served by the same numbered services as we met in Heweth Without. These are the 840 and the 843 between Tadcaster and Moulton. Then we've got a crew yard, that's Jackson's, who manufacture and supply building materials to local agricultural and industrial companies. Okay, that brings us to the parish notice board. We can get this one out of the way pretty early on, which is a good thing, means we can concentrate more on the main walk. Stockton on the forest is officially complete. And behind this board, we've got the Fox Inn. 
just peeking its head out from above the board there. Let's talk about that and then talk about the, the current school, which is opposite. Stockton's only pub is called the Fox Inn. It's a traditional pub and restaurant with rooms. They've got quiz nights here too, so says the sign. Lovely stuff. Outside there's a phone box, still with a working phone, and over the road is the village primary school, which can cater for around 100 pupils. Just past the school we've got the War Memorial standing at the entrance to the village's one and only church, Holy Trinity. Built in 1920, this memorial honours the 13 local men who never returned from the two world wars. The first church to be constructed on this site was medieval, possibly late Norman, but little seems to be known of it. This was destroyed in 1808 when a new church was built. In 1895, the church was completely rebuilt in a 13th century Gothic style in white brick with some stone dressings. The tower contains four bells, all cast in 1892. In 2012, the churches in Stockton, Holtby and Warthill joined with Dunnington to form the ecclesiastical parish of rural East York. So as I said at the beginning, a very linear place this, it's a long stretched out village. There is a circular bit at the end though, and we're coming towards that, and we'll end up at Stockton Hall at the end, which is a, um, a very interesting place, which I'm sure a lot of you already know a lot about. For those that don't, well, stay tuned. Continuing through the village, here we have Church View. This is a former farmhouse that's now a B&B, a holiday cottage and a bunkhouse all rolled into one. Next door, this little green building is the base of the local scout group, which has operated in the village since 2000. It consists of a beaver colony, a cub pack and a scout troop. The beautiful old houses continue. That's the Grade 2 listed park farmhouse you can see in shot now. We're about halfway along the one and a half mile stretch, and as we venture further south, you might just be able to see parts of Stockton Hall peeking out above the houses. Trust me, folks, it's an impressive building. Next, we take a left turn into Stone Riggs, part of a large-ish housing estate to the village's southwest. This is generally semi-detached housing, with a few bungalows thrown in here and there. Also thrown in, there's Stone Riggs Play Area, which is the village's largest facility for all those younger ones. It's a beautiful village, this. I mean, I'm thoroughly enjoying this. This is fantastic. I think it's probably one of the best York villages I've ever seen. <laughs> up to now. I know I've still got a handful to go to, so that might change, but up to now I think this is probably my favourite. Let's complete this circuit of this housing estate and then go back onto the main road and then we'll take on Stockton Hall. There's not much more to say about this estate, it's clearly been developed sometime within the last 50 years. Not a bad little place for the average York commuter. As you approach the end of the road you find the local surgery. That's this little building which you could so easily mistake for just another house. It's a right turn for us here as we complete the little circuit, but it's worth noting two things you can find to the left. One of them is Craven's Motorcycle Museum, whose website I've linked below. If you're a bike nut, it's well worth checking them out. The other thing is the family-run Dean's Garden Centre, which opened its doors back in 1968. They also have a branch in Scarborough. Next for us is a pillar box, and this one's a notable one, because it dates from the days of George VI. It stands right outside Stockton's Village Shop, operated by Tom Luce, who even has his own blue plaque on the wall. This is open seven days a week. Pretty popular with cyclists it seems, that shop, well it's York, what do you expect? This, this city has plenty of cyclists on plenty of cycle routes around it. Now let's head for Stockton Hall. So here we go, underneath these trees and the hall is on the left. I've built this up, so this had better be good. This is Stockton Hall, which was built in around 1800 as a country house. It's a brick-built three-storey building with a five-bay frontage, and it's Grade 2 listed. 
In 1820, it was owned by Hall Plumer Esquire before being acquired by the barrister George Lloyd of Leeds. It was then handed down through the Lloyd family. It's now a hospital, or more accurately, a secure unit for mentally ill patients, and it's operated by the Priory Group. Now, as you can probably appreciate, it wasn't easy finding spots to film this, as most of it is shielded by trees and other greenery. Mind you, on De Morley Place, you can find the equally impressive old stable block, which has seemingly been converted into residences. It's perhaps more notable than the hall itself, given its central bell turret and clock beneath a dome and a weather vane carried on fluted columns. You've got to say, back in 1800, they sure knew how to build stuff, didn't they? It's one impressive building is Stockton Hall, isn't it? Although I should say buildings because there's more than one. That is effectively the route around Stockton on the forest. From here, all I've got to do is walk straight back up the road to where I parked. However, there is one more thing that falls within Stockton's boundaries that's of interest, and it's an old railway station. Technically speaking, it should belong to the Rydale Parish, which borders Stockton on the forest. But for some strange reason, it's on this side of the boundary. Let's go and find it. Just before we go to the site of that old station, I've just realised I forgot about the village hall. I was meant to park right here outside it, but I'd stopped a few yards short, completely forgetting that this even existed. So here is Stockton on the Forest Village Hall. There we go. We'll see what I can find about this, and we'll talk a bit about this before we go up to the station, and then we're heading that away up Sandy Lane. According to Stockton Parish Council's website, the Village Hall is run by a volunteer management committee. It features a large screen and a projector available for all to hire, and it's the go-to place for many a village club or society. Let's take a drive now away from the Village Hall towards the site of that station. Now, despite where we are, the station in question was named Wart Hill when it closed in 1959. However, when it originally opened in 1847, it was called Stockton. Over the years, it's also been known as Stockton Forest and Stockton on the Forest too. It was on the York to Beverly line. Between 1922 and 1932, the station was also the southern terminus of the Sand Hutton Light Railway, which supplied the estate of Sir Robert Walker. We'll be covering that very soon. The old signal box here still stands, and fun fact, its former level crossing was the first in the UK to have its manually operated gates replaced by lifting boom barriers. Now, we can't do a video on Stockton on the Forest without talking about the forest, surely. Correct, we can't. Stockton sits on the edge of the ancient forest of Galtres. It was established by the Norman kings of England and once extended all the way up to York City walls. The main settlement within the forest was Easingwold. But in 1316, the forest comprised 60 villages within 100,000 acres, one of which was Stockton. It was at its peak during the reign of Henry II. Aside from royal deer hunting, the forest was a dependable source of timber. Some of it was used for the timber palisades of York Castle, preceding its stone construction. It's said that oak from Galtres was held in a higher esteem than oak from Sherwood Forest. The Galtres name is commemorated in several North Yorkshire schools and the Forest of Galtres Golf Club at Skelton. Oh, and speaking of golf, by the way, Stockton has a course too. Forest Park, located to the north of Stockton Hall.
So yeah, it's a little bit mental that Wart Hill Station is within Stockton on the forest boundaries, but that's just how parish boundaries are. They are weird things. We have seen that before. And that station is typical of all the others on this very same line, isn't it? All the ones we've seen so far on this line. I'm sure there are plenty more to encounter yet. And that brings Stockton on the forest to a conclusion. All I've got to do from here is drive that way onto the A64 and head off to my next one here in York, which will be a little bit bigger than this, but no less interesting, I dare say. And that's it folks, that's been Stockton on the forest. Running through its boundaries is the A64. Travelling north from here will take you into Rydale, but that's for another day. For me, it's south and back into York and on to the next one. Only five remain in York now, and they're five of the biggest in the city. I'll catch you next week. Thanks for watching this video folks don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already it really makes a difference with youtube if you're new here subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it you can find all the links to my social media accounts below as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel also if you've enjoyed this episode have a look at some more videos in this series until next time i've been andy also known as the village idiot and i'm out <laughs>